Live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We are coming to you live from the Computer History Museum at the third annual Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Excited to be joined by Joyce Lynn, developer advocate from Postman. Joyce, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So you are a developer advocate, but Postman is um, a tool that helps the community learn about Cisco APIs. Postman is a, Cisco is a customer of yours. But tell me a little bit about your experience at DevNet Create, because you have an interesting story from last year, which was your first year at this event. Exactly, last year we just happened to stop by, and as I was walking through this very room, you hear all these workshops going on behind us, my ears perked up because I heard somebody say, Python and Postman are two of the most powerful tools. And I was like, hey, I work at Postman. So I like stopped in to see and I slacked my team back immediately at the office. They're really using Postman to teach Cisco technology here. And that was surprising to you, and here you are now here a year later. Yeah. Tell us some of the things that you're expecting to learn and hear and feel and see from 2019's Create. So this year, I hear about all these people learning Postman, learning about tech through Postman, so I'm actually giving two talks this afternoon, the first talk's talking about building the community, because a lot of people use Postman, and the second talk is about using mock servers, how to fake an API until you actually code it and deploy it. Take a minute to explain Postman, why is it so popular, why is Cisco jazzed about it, what are they using it for, and then how are they bringing that in? Take a minute to talk about what you guys do. Well, several years ago when Postman started as a side project, it was primarily for developers, and it helped developers do their day-to-day -day jobs, but we found a lot more people are interacting with technology or working at tech companies where they might not have the setup to initiate a request, an API request. And so Postman allows them to, on their desktop, be able to interact with the tech in a way that normally they wouldn't have the whole setup to do it. So, so in terms of developers, what's, is it a freemium model? They can do it for free? And Absolutely, then... it's freemium. And I think within the last year, we've scooched almost anything that used to be um, a paid feature down to free, so you can try it out. And in fact, if you have a small business or a side project, it's, it's free. And what's the talk track you're going to have? You got two talks. Yeah. One on community, one on um, serv servers, mod servers. Yeah. So mock servers mock is servers. something that I thought might be interesting to this crowd, but a lot of these people have are in charge of managing the infrastructure or supporting existing APIs or services that are out in the cloud. And so mock servers are a way that you can essentially mock an API for parallel development or to build a prototype. And so this helps developers get faster App, app up and running, yep. and then what happens when they have to get rid of the mock server and put a real server on there? They got to build out their API, is that what happens next? Typically, they're spinning up a mock server first, and then they're building out their own servers. So yeah, they would swap out the mock with uh, their own. And what's the other talk on community? Just how to do a community, open source? What's the, yeah. the aspects of the community talk? It's kind of an odd topic for this kind of crowd, but a lot of people work for companies that are, or work for teams, where they're just trying to build like a sense of community or foster some sort of mission. Yeah. And so just telling the Postman story, and Postman was free for, absolutely free for a super long time, and it, the growth yeah. has just been astronomical. You're at six million developers yeah. on the platform I think we're right more now. than that, but I can't say it. On, on <laughs> companies, 130 million plus APIs, and that's all just since the company was established in 2014 after this sort of side project that you talked about. So yeah. pretty, pretty quick growth trajectory that you guys are on. And a lot of it was word of mouth. I mean, until I came here last year and heard all the Cisco people talking about how they were using Postman, we did not know that. So how have, how has Postman actually evolved your technology in the last year just since you stumbled upon, wow, this we're actually really hot here. We are really a facilitator of developers, this community that's now, what, 585,000 members strong, learn about Cisco APIs. I'd love to know how that has sort of catalyzed growth for Postman. Well, back in the day, Postman started as developer first. So here's an individual developer, how can they work more effectively? But teams like Cisco, you'll be lucky if you find a team of 10 people. These are hundreds and thousands of developers coming together to work together. So Postman as a tool has shifted from focusing on only the developer to how do you support developers working in larger teams. 
So I want the community angle, because one of the things that Lisa and I were just talking about, because she does a lot of uh, women in tech interviews with theCUBE, and we're building out these communities ourselves, and in Silicon Valley, the old expression, fake it till you make it, yeah. is kind of a startup uh, uh, buzzword, but people try to fake community, or buy community. You really can't get away with that in communities. Communities are very fickle, a successful open source projects, you got to contribute, you got to have presence, you got to show your work, you got to get rid of the bad actors. Yeah. It's pretty efficient, but things are new now in communities, this modern era, you talk about Slack, you got tools. How is community evolving? What's your perspective on this? That's an interesting question. I think the community, you never want a fake community, absolutely agree, and Something that Postman has kind of lagged on is the community's been huge, but we haven't really been involved. So around the world we have people giving workshops that we don't even know about, like around the world. And how can we support them and allow them to tell, um, teach things consistently and teach best practices? So I wouldn't say, unfortunately, well, or fortunately, we're not in the position where we have to encourage the growth, but rather just support the people that are already doing this. This is the community. You're an ingredient to community development because you're enabling other people to be relevant with their communities. So you're not so much like just trying to be a community player, you're just, yeah. your product enables community growth. Absolutely, yeah. And so you just got to kind of feed the- Postman <laughs> as a tool and then Postman the you're community. You're the seeds of community. Yeah, just we're helping. So talk about some of the, where you guys locate, how many people in your company, what's, this, what's some sure. of the numbers? We're headquartered in San Francisco. We have a huge engineering department in Bangalore where our founders are from. And I think just a few months ago we started having distributed people. So now we're everywhere. Um, I think we're about 100 headcount. 55% uh, of that is engineering. So we're, I don't know, we're a startup? <laughs> I would say we're a startup. Hunt yeah, with over 200,000 companies using the technologies. We said over six million developers. How do you get a handle on, to your point earlier, supporting all of these groups that are out there enabling, as John said, enabling and fueling communities like DevNet? I mean, how, how do you start that with a, a hundred person organization. Yeah, and I'm so glad you're like, wow, that doesn't seem like a huge organization because other people are like, I thought you were way bigger than that. Um, one thing is that we do listen to our community and so if they're having a pain point, we try to aggregate all those voices and then come out with a cohesive roadmap. Because what might be the loudest voice or even a lot of voices might not be what's right for the tool. The other thing is we're not an open source company but we have a ton of open source projects. So the community has, again, developed converters, integrations, all these open source tools that for their specific workflow works for them and actually they're sharing it with the community. Trish, how did you get into all this? How did you join the company? What attracted you and what's, what's the story? Well, um, I'm in San Francisco, so I work for a tech company. I have a hodgepodge background, which I won't go into because it just sounds confusing. Some people call me the Wolverine at work. Ooh, that's a good nickname. <laughs> um, hopefully it's not because I'm so hairy, but it's because I've had many lives. So I've, I kind of bring a little bit of that to my developer advocate role, a little bit of product, a yeah. little bit of marketing, a little bit of the business side. It's good versatility, a lot of versatility. Exactly, yeah. So let me ask you a question. One of the things we've been covering is obviously we love cloud native. We've been covering cloud in the early days, 08, 07, all the way through. Love cloud native, we get that check. Enterprise is hot, you see Cisco using your stuff. Enterprise developers are hot right now. People are uh, fast building applications. It's got a cloud native flair to it, DevNet Create, but it's also got to integrate into the classic enterprise. Yeah. What's the difference in your view and your experience, your observations between enterprise developers and then your classic, you know, hardcore cloud native developer? I would say that's something that Postman as an organization is dealing with right now. Um, because we started developer first, now we're finding, oh, it's a different person making these decisions. What tool should we use? Sometimes it's top down. But at the end of the day, it's always the developer that is going to support a top down decision, a developer that's going to find the utility out of a certain tool. So we're shifting our focus, but not necessarily by that much, because as long as you focus developer first, it's still. So enterprise kind of taking more of a classic cloud developer or native, cloud native developer, you think? Is that kind of the profile in your mind? Well, again, you have an enterprise developer, but what, where is that enterprise developer going to be in two years? <laughs> so we're yeah. not hanging our hat too much on enterprise yeah. only, yeah. What do you think about the Cisco's message of programming the network? 
I mean, infrastructure as code, that's kind of a nice value proposition. Yeah. Take the complexity away. What's your take on the reaction to that vision? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear what part, what part of, tell well, me more. Well, they're saying developers shouldn't have to configure hardware, you know, abstract the network capabilities out and make it code yeah. so the developer yeah. just, it just happens. Got it, yeah, and if you think about how you can scale, uh, can you scale linearly or exponentially, enabling every developer or team to deploy their own uh, code at their own pace with their own tools is something that allows you to scale exponentially. So things like mock servers that we were talking about earlier, if I'm yeah. relying on somebody, that's my bottleneck, yeah. to spin this up um, with the normal yeah. workflow for the organization, that's a bottleneck. Yeah. Spin up your own mock server, find I mean, your own tools. Mock servers are a great resource because remember the old days in mobile, the emulators? Kind of you had to have an emulator yeah. to kind of the get old going. Days. <laughs> okay. the old days. That was like five years yeah. ago. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. But similar model, like hey, I don't need to, I can't build that out now, but I need to know what it's going to look like so I can get this done. And that allows you to iterate at the fastest level, at the local developer level. Yeah. yeah. We've been covering the old days here in theCUBE. Uh, <laughs> We're old. <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> Well, Joyce, thanks so much for your time joining us on the Cube program this morning at, at DevNet Create. Best of luck in your two sessions later on today. We look forward to seeing you next time. Great, thank you. Great nice to meet you. you. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube live from Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Thanks for watching.